Basically, there are three different ways for getting Azure DevOps data into Power BI. One of them is using the native connector. We can also use an OData connector and lastly, the REST API. Within the scope of this video, we are not going to use the native, con the native connector. Basically, I found that there are certain limitations when, when uh, using the native connector and we cannot retrieve all the data that we might need for our Power BI repo. So we will base and we will talk about uh, OData and the REST API. Now, everything that I uh, today show you, it, it is explained on this article, which we have on BIP.pro, which its name is Azure DevOps in Power BI. Let's go and take a look how to get this data. So the first thing that uh, we are going to realize here on the article is that uh, we have the explanation of the code, but let's go and jump directly into the code that we need using the OData connector. Basically, is this snip that we have in here, uh, the one that we are going to uh, use for uh, getting data through the OData connector. So in here, I will copy this snip of code, right click, and I will copy, and then I will go to my Power BI desktop application. From there, I will go to get data, and in get data, uh, I will uh, sorry, I will not go to get data. I will go to transform data and in transform data, I will go to a new source and in a new source, I will open a blank query. Now, uh, in our blank query, I will go to the advanced editor and I will paste uh, the query that we early copy from the blog post. Now, something that you might realize in here and let's go and talk a little bit about the query that we, we have in here. So one of the things is that uh, we are going to need the organization name and the project name for uh, from DevOps. Then we are also applying certain filter or certain par uh, query parameters. One of them is this filter. And basically we are telling a uh, the work item type equals epic. We can also change this filter and for example, set non equals. In this case, I will leave it as not equals. The next thing that we are going to do is that we are going to specify which are the columns that we want to bring from DevOps. If we don't include this parameter, what will happen is that we will bring all of the columns uh, from DevOps and there are a lot and this may, um, this may make our query a little bit more or the table a little bit more, more dirty. So I would always recommend that we do a selection of the, of the columns that we want to use. The next parameter is expand. Basically, you have certain fields within parameters which can be expanded because they are records, right? And one of them, one, one very good example is for example, is users. So a user can be a record because a user has uh, different attributes, for example, the name or the email, the organization. There, we can have several attributes for a person, telephone, office, there can be a lot of them. So in this case, uh, I am uh, I am expanding the column assigned to, but I am only mentioning, and this is the, this part, uh, this part of the query, uh, that I only want the username and the email because if I don't specify it uh, using this parenthesis and then the select equals. Uh, basically, we will bring all the attributes from the assigned to user, and this is something that we don't want. Now, the next is just uh, an expansion of the assigned to uh, because we, we need to expand this information. Now, uh, where do we get the organization and the project name? For this, we need to go to our DevOps, uh, and in DevOps, I will go here to DevOps, and you will see that uh, I have this admin sandbox is my a organization and test project is a project that I want. So in this case, I will copy everything after .com uh, forward slash. So admin sandbox until project, I will copy. And from there, I will go back to my power, to my power query. In power query, I will replace these curly brackets and I will paste it. The uh, organization and I will paste also the project. Now I will click on done. If this is the first time that we have uh, that we do this, we will be prompted to edit our credentials. In this case, we need to authenticate via using the organizational account, and then I will click on sign in. In this case, 
uh, I am signing with this developer account, which I will now click on connect. And as you see in here, and let's uh, also look in DevOps, right? So I have uh, this project and in project I can go to my boards and we will see that we only have two tasks, right? One task and actually the other one, two elements and the other one is an epic. But remember that in our query, we included this filter, which is not equal epic because we can also include equal epic and I will click on done. And now we are uh, going to bring the, uh, the query uh, and we are only going to receive the epics and this is because of the filter okay so now uh, we have in here and let me go back to uh, the advanced editor uh, and I will actually in this case I will uh, remove this filter so we are uh, receiving both the epic and the task that's something that I will do now, the next thing that I want to show you is uh, we need to bring and there can be the case that we want to bring the description of the of the epic, sorry, of the work item that, that we have. Let me just go to the work item and just to show you what I mean by description. So the description, we have it in this field and basically we can add uh, in here, uh, this is a description. Now, there is, unfortunately, there is no way using the OData connector to get this information in Power BI with the OData connector. And this is where we will have to make use of our, uh, of the REST API. Now, in this case, for the REST API, we will go once more back to the, uh, to the blog post and I will copy the function that I have in here. I will click Control C. Then I will go back to Power Query and in Power Query, now I will go to the new source. In the new source, I will select the blank query, go to the advanced editor, paste this blank query. Now let's go and take a look at what we have to include here. So the first thing that we need to include is the email. And this is uh, the email uh, that has an email that has actually access or the email that you're using for accessing the project. Let me quickly get this email. Let me go back to DevOps because I don't know this email. So uh, let me quickly go to the account. And in my account, I now should be able to see the email. On... Okay, so I have in here the email that I will use. Control C. I will go back to my power query and I will replace the email here. Don't forget the uh, colons that you are going to, because this is something which is needed. And then we will need our personal access token. This need to be, uh, this need to be between these uh, double quotes and uh, my personal access token. Uh, I will go back to uh, my DevOps and in DevOps, if you don't have your personal access token, something that you can do is that you need to click here on user settings and then you need to go to personal access tokens. In personal access token, I will create new. Uh, this will be my test token from my organization sandbox. It will, uh, it will expire in 30 days and I only need read, uh, read permissions for the work items. Now I can create click on create and I will have in here my token. This is something which is important and it usually happens in all these type of secrets or tokens is that you can only see it once. So uh, make sure that you copy the token and now we can head back to Power Query. Now in Power Query, uh, I will include the token. Actually, I don't need these double quotes and the ampersand so I can uh, delete it and in this case we will have the concatenation of the admin sandbox which is the email plus the token. Now the next thing that we are, are going to need is the organization name and the project name. Now these ones I will also include them in double quotes and we have already copied these ones uh, somewhere around here. So now we have the admin sandbox, uh, sorry, which is the organization. And then we also have the project. And with that, we have ready our function. Now I will click on done. 
Now, as you see in here, we have our function. Let me just rename this one as a description. In this case, this will be description function. Uh, let's rename this as work items. And now in here, what we need to do, and this is uh, the normal behavior when we are using a function in a column, is that we can add a column we can invoke the custom function, and then we are going to call the function query will be description effects, which was the function that we earlier created. And this function requires one, or only has one mandatory parameter, which is the work item ID. We are going to select the column which contains this information, which is also the column work item ID, and then I will click on okay. I will edit credentials, and in this case, I, as we are using the web.contents uh, and we are authenticating using a username or email and personal access token, we need to choose anonymous as connection. And then I will click on connect. Now we are going to be asked about privacy details. In this case, I will click on continue. And something which I, I find that it's a good practice is that setting uh, the, our uh, the privacy levels of our connections, both to organizational. Uh, if you don't do this, you will have you will start having problems with uh, dynamic refreshes on the service. So this is why we do it both organizational. Now I will click on save, and in this case, I have in here the description of the work item. I will expand. I will only keep the fields. I don't want the original column as a prefix. I will click on OK. Then I will expand once more and I will keep the system description. And do you see we have in here this, the description. Now, one thing about the descriptions uh, using the REST APIs is that they come with rich HTML. And um, basically in here you will have to either clean it or you can also use it in an HTML visual, custom visual, and you will be able to display the rich text content of uh, the description that you have. Now in your query, you might see two errors. One of them is in username and the other one is in user email. Basically these errors come because we don't have information for assigned person. So something that we can do is we can click on the header of the column, right click, we can uh, replace errors and the errors uh, we can replace them for null. Now we could also just, this is a small power query trick. We could also replace uh, the other error by right clicking on it replace errors and then uh, the value uh, we wanted to replace it for nothing uh, and uh, we will have two different steps but we, we can actually do this in a single step so uh, by doing for doing this in a single step what we need to do is basically i can copy this user email and replace it for nothing i can come to the previous step and basically uh, what I can do in here is just comma and play um, and paste the, the array and basically we are replacing and in the in here case uh, here the formula replace error values from the column username and but let me do it for null the same name uh, the same thing as user email I will replace it for null and I will click on OK and you will see that now both of the columns have null values and I can get rid of this additional replace step. And finally, we can just close and apply, which will load the data into our Power BI report. Well, with that, we fin finalize this demo. I hope you find it useful. Uh, please let me know uh, your comments or questions uh, in this video. And as always, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you very much.